Greetings again from the Adventure Minds. I'm the creator of the Palace of a Thousand and One Rooms, and I'm here to tell you about our next installment, Chapter 6, The Halls of Glory. My co-writer is back here somewhere. For all you fans, you've come to know just what to expect from the palace, but for those of you that are just learning about it, let me tell you just what it is. Well, the Palace of a Thousand and One Rooms is what it says it is. It's a palace with one thousand and one rooms, each masterfully illustrated and individually detailed. More than just a mega dungeon, it's practically its own campaign setting. Here, let me show you. Some of them are standalone chambers, while others are part of a story thread. It's monsters. It's magic. It's colorful characters. It's weirdness. It's portals. Lots and lots of portals. Within these portals lies the real magic. The unique thing about the palace is that no two adventures are the same. What we've done is create a sort of random dungeon generator by making each page its own room, connected randomly by these teleportation portals. That way, the player or GM can roll a D100 or D1000, based on how you're running the module, and turn to that page to see where the last portal takes the party. Once there, the GM is given some introductory script to read aloud to the players. The rest of the information is presented in numbered text blocks assigned to individual elements of the room. And we really mean it when we say no two adventures are the same. We've been playtesting it with different groups for close to a year now and every party's path is unique. It's so fun to see the many different solutions to the various plots. The immense attention to detail is what makes the palace so rich for players and GMs. Every chamber immediately comes to life through illustration, and the creative quirks we have written into the items and magics presented within. Despite being so detailed, there is still plenty of room for GMs and players to add their own creativity to the adventures they'll have inside. We can't always fit every piece of information onto each page, therefore, Good improvisation still goes a long way. As a matter of fact, in some rooms, we're just begging the GM to add their own flavor. Take for example, one of my favorites, the Endless Birdhouse from Chapter 4. A birdhouse for the messenger pigeons. The beauty of this one is hidden in innuendo. It's a room within a room. A house within a house, and its depths are infinite. Or are they? If it is infinite, which layer are the PCs in? Which layer are the players in? Who really are the messengers, and most importantly, what is the message? There are so many ways to interact with the palace. It is open to be played in whatever way your party wants, whether it be as tomb looters or righteous servants of some greater cause. Many of the monsters are more than just an obstacle to defeat. There are secrets. Layers and layers of secrets. And sometimes the monsters are the only ones that know them. Clever PCs will be rewarded for their quick, role-playing wit, while the tanks will still be necessary to keep everyone alive, because there will be plenty of fighting as well. In fact, the palace is full of ways to die. We wanted to make it challenging. Each chapter increases in difficulty, making those characters who live to see the final chamber, truly, epic heroes. We've tried to make the palace as diverse as possible, allowing every flavor of D&D &D that people enjoy to be an element in the game. In some ways this is our ode to the entire genre. Our celebration of 47 years of fantasy gaming. This is everything but the kitchen sink. We'll probably throw the kitchen sink in there at some point. Becoming a backer is becoming a fan. We've launched several successful Kickstarters already to fund chapters 1 through 5. Our fans have come to enjoy waiting for each new chapter to be released, as you would anticipate the next season of your favorite show. 
While the chapters are all part of an ongoing story, each one is also a standalone adventure, and not all of the rooms are essential narrative elements. Many of them are just a fun, vignette, of some piece of classic D&D. Furthermore, you can even add your own piece of the palace. A few of our backeteers allow you to add content to chapters in the works. We work with our backers to ensure that whatever goes in is customized to their tastes and edited to benefit any user. Here are some examples. This backer wanted to memorialize a beloved, fallen character from their old game, so we created a parallel for him to dwell here. Rest in peace, Dash. His soul may be gone, but his memory lives on, one action at a time. Not only do we lovingly craft each chapter, but we provide ongoing support for GMs as well as players running the modules. On our many social media platforms, you can get supplemental art, character portraits, questions answered, and feedback submitted. You can find a link tree to all our hangouts in the story for this Kickstarter. We're not just another game maker pumping out content. This is our baby. This is a labor of love. We believe in this. What can we say? We love Dungeons and Dragons. Like I mentioned earlier, this is our ode to the genre. We want to bring back all the things that have made this game so great for us, and present them to new gamers. Come relive what made D&D the phenomenon it is. In so many ways, fantasy gaming is reconnecting to the myths that defined our cultures. Without these sagas of our ancestors, we wouldn't have the foundation that has made so many more creative endeavors possible, and that is why we give each chapter its own historically or stylistically inspired theme. We started off with the gatehouse. It stood as a proof of concept and entryway to what we hoped to make out of the palace. In it were many classic concepts from fantasy gaming and some forgotten beasts from early D&D, &D, a sort of gumbo from older fantasy gaming worlds. In Chapter 2, we presented a very early European medieval-style fantasy, a sleeping princess from a world of gallant chivalry with hints of Arthurian and Carolingian mythology, as well as some ancient Celtic influence. This set the stage for the next two chapters. For chapters 2 and 3, we dove off into what we consider classic D&D. &D. Comprising two major elements, the dungeon crawl and the magic castle, players rose from the depths of the servant quarters into the halls of the main keep. The original theme was intended to be a sort of Byzantine kingdom, but we kept many gothic elements for this one. Nevertheless, the transition towards the east was clear, as we made our way towards chapter 5. In Chapter 5, which we are currently working on, we have dove deep into the world of Arabian fantasy, taking inspiration from a thousand and one Arabian nights, as well as digging up old classics from previous iterations of Arabesque D&D &D lore. As with the tales of one thousand and one nights, this chapter will present stories within stories, as we reveal how storytelling itself is an integral component of magic. By the way, did we mention that the whole palace is magical? Of course it is. How else could it sit on the edge of, or be connected to so many different worlds? Through the course of the series, our end goal is to present the origins and ultimate source of all magic. We consider magic the essential component of fantasy, which is, in turn, the essential element of any fantasy RPG. Oh, and I almost forgot about the next chapter. That's what you're here for. For chapter 6, we'll be borrowing many Greco-Roman elements to create a story of conquest blessed by the gods themselves. Prepare to do battle in the arena, dodge lightning bolts, resist the siren's song, and complete a multitasked quest on your ascension towards chapter 7. As for chapter 7 and beyond, well, we've got lots of surprises in store. Let's see if we can get there. Our stretch goals intend to produce as many chapters as possible from this funding drive. It's hard to believe that this is the work of two nerds that love gaming, but it's true. Chapters 1 through 5 have all been produced by two old friends. 
Before starting this project, we played D&D together along with some longtime friends for 25 or so years. D&D is what we do. Become a backer today and help us continue our passion. We hope you'll enjoy this beautiful, multifaceted gem that is the Palace of a Thousand and One Rooms.